Welcome everybody, this is John Burra and welcome to the Mammoth Podcast. In this podcast I talk about what's going on at my company, Mammoth Interactive. I talk about what's going on in the tech world and most importantly I give you some tips on how to program and how to use technology in cool ways. So welcome to the Mammoth Podcast. All right, welcome back, everybody. Uh, so it's been a really cool week here at Mammoth Interactive, and I'll talk a little bit about what we've done and what's going on. So the first things first is that a little while ago, uh, uh, someone from Udemy had approached me to be a part of a fundraising campaign on Indiegogo, and um, what uh, what it was is that it was for Black Girls Code, and if I read this from the website, Black Girls Code is to increase the number of women of color in the digital space by empowering girls of color ages 7 to 17 to become innovators in STEM fields, leaders in their communities, and builders of their own future through exposure to computer science and technology. So one of uh, my courses, and specifically it was my stencil course uh, that was uh, that was being um, that was going to be offered as the $500 level. So if you had pledged for that, uh, they you would have gotten uh, the, the $500 level and you would have gotten my stencil course. So um, it's really cool because they actually raised over $100,000 for it, which is exactly what, uh, what which they're more than they're asking. I think they got something like 114 and they got it on Indiegogo, which is actually kind of cool too. So <clears throat> I'm glad to be a part of that and I'm glad to support that cause. I like anybody to learn how to use technology because technology is awesome. And if you know how to use technology, you will have a job because there are lots of people who do not. So that's why I make my courses. I teach you everything that I've learned. And uh, you know, as I got better with technology, I uh, have become more employable and I've become you know, happier, et cetera. So the other thing uh, that's kind of interesting is that they decided to do uh, something on Indiegogo. And you probably have heard of Indiegogo as the alternative to Kickstarter. Now, Kickstarter has traditionally only been available in the States, but I believe you can use it in, um, in uh, the United Kingdom and Canada now, but you can't use it elsewhere. And if you want to use it elsewhere, you want to use like some kind of crowdfunding elsewhere, you have to go and use Indiegogo. And Indiegogo is, is all right, I suppose. Um, and I'm actually surprised they decided to go with Indiegogo just because if you put something on Kickstarter, you're just going to get much more money. And, and uh, I generally tend to not see a lot of... Um, a lot of big fundraising done on Indiegogo as much as Kickstarter. So Kickstarter has that brand, which is actually quite cool, and uh, Indiegogo is the lesser known one. But I'm glad they got they got um, they got the funding, and um, I'm s glad to see that Indiegogo is uh, is actually uh, another alternative because depending on where you live, uh, you might not have uh, might not be available to certain uh, certain. Uh, services like Kickstarter, you know, if you live in, let's say, Africa, you can you go ahead and use Indiegogo, but um, you can't go ahead and use Kickstarter, all right? So let's talk about what we've released here. So uh, there has actually been quite a bit of, of release, uh, release products here at Mammoth Interactive. The first is One Hour HTML5. And uh, if you don't know what HTML5 is, HTML5 is the new version of uh, HTML. HTML4 came around the year 2000, and HTML5 what it does is it allows us to um, use video and audio and a whole bunch of other cool, um, other cool features such as scalable vector graphics, which I'll talk more about this in this tutorial, uh, in this podcast here. But um, and there's a lot of cool things, and I show you how to use the basics uh, in one hour HTML5. So HTML5 is cool, and I suggest you take that course. Uh, another course I released is One Hour C Sharp, and C Sharp is Microsoft's programming language. It is actually really cool, and in fact, I programmed my Xbox game in something like C Sharp called XNA, and uh, XNA was also quite cool. And um, in C Sharp, I just show you the basics in that. One Hour C++, and you've probably heard of C++. In fact, C++ was the first programming language. No, actually, it was the second programming language. The first programming language... I worked with was um, basic and then uh, visual basic <laughs> and I remember playing with uh, gorilla on on my PC if you guys remember that game and then we can go ahead and play around with the code is actually kind of cool so we got C++ um, you know it C++ is is the inspiration for a lot of other languages and um, you know depending on where you are 
uh, and what you're doing, you're probably going to use C++ at some point. Even if you're, let's say, making a game in Unreal Engine, which has uh, their own kind of uh, version, like Unreal Script. But people constantly ask me to program f stuff in them uh, for C++. And usually with game development, what you need to be able to do is you need to be able to program in C++ and um, you need to be able to program in C++ for libraries that work cross-platform. So a lot of times you need to go ahead and edit the engine source code in C++ so it can work on Android and um, you know, if you want to add your own feature, you can work on Android, iPhone, Xbox, whatever. All right, and the last thing uh, that we released is um, there's the back. It's called the Back to School Web Development and Programming Bundle, and this has a lot of these one-hour courses in it. And it's that time of year where we go and we get the back to school. So it was logical to release a back to school web development and programming bundle. So in this bu bundle, you get about 12 hours of content and you get to learn HTML, HTML5, CSS, CSS3, C++, C Sharp, jQuery, Game Salad, and Stencil. And on along the way, you get to learn a whole bunch of other development techniques too. So uh, there's a link in the description here and you can go ahead and, uh, and get that if you want. So I'm also working on a lot of other cool stuff, um, although I personally like to tell you about it when it's done. And uh, I'll tell you, and uh, I really like to talk about my projects as they're going along. Uh, I just like to say, so, hey, you know what, it's out. Go ahead and, and check it out. And you can just listen to the podcast for more updates on what's going on with that. All right, so uh, there's a lot of cool game stuff happening. Um, I can tell you there's always something cool happening here. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is Google uh, yesterday released a Claire de Lune um, uh, little kind of animation, and if you don't know uh, what Claire de Lune is, it's a uh, it's a work by a, a French composer named Claude Debussy, and it's amazing. I absolutely love this work, and I really really enjoy a certain part. In fact, there's this one part that's one of my favorite parts in classical music. Okay, and so if you if you Google Google Claire de Lune, you can probably see the uh, the YouTube version of it. Um, and the cool part is that it was done in HTML5, and they actually use scale vector graphics. And so, first of all, again, I have a course on this, by the way. Um, the scalable vector graphics, uh, what they are, is they are computer-drawn graphics, and they are what they call resolution independent, meaning that you can take these scalable vector graphics and uh, either you can either make them as big as you want or as small as you want without loss of resolution. What does that mean? So if you take a picture of, let's say, you know, your house and you zoom in, it becomes pixelated and you can't really do anything it, with it. And if you take a picture of your house and you stretch it in Photoshop and uh, it just doesn't look good. However, with scalable vector graphics, you can stretch, let's say, a drawing of a house as big as you want, as small as you want, and there is no loss of resolution. So it's really, really cool. And they actually made this, um, I believe that uh, Claude Debussy was part of the Impressionists, or in music, the late Romantic era. And um, by the way, it, depending on where you are in the art world, they have different names for different time periods. So I believe uh, Claude Debussy was the late Romantic era. And uh, if not, if you're into art, it's more or less the Impressionist era. But anyway, the late 19th century, um, you get this very cool atmospheric, scalable vector graphic, HTML5, with uh, Claire de Lune uh, playing in the background. Now, HTML5 originally had poor audio support. I remember when it first came out, you wanted to loop something like music in your game, and it wouldn't do that. It would actually have a little bit of pause unless you really tried to work around the code. So, it's, uh, so I'm glad that they can use both the scalable vector graphics and the audio to make something quite artistic and atmospheric. And you don't usually see this in tech. Tech usually, usually seems to be pretty A to B. They don't really concern themselves about, let's say, the, um, the fractal quality of what they're doing. So I'm glad that this is out. But the biggest problem I had with this and I, re I rarely try to nitpick this much about something, especially when, you know, it's a piece of art and someone was really, really uh, keen about putting it in there. But they forget my favorite part of the song. 
And it, again, as I said earlier, it's one of my favorite parts of classical music altogether, and they forget it. So in the music part of it, at least in the song, they have uh, the, the whole part is almost, the whole first part is almost an exposition to my favorite part. And you probably, if you've heard Claire de Lune before, you probably are thinking about the same part I have. Anyway, go look at it on the video, and you'll see that it just cuts off. And, um, and it's kind of like watching Star Wars without the Death Star blowing up. Like, that, that's what I would have equated to, just because, um, just because it's, it's really awesome, and they forget about it. So the whole part is build up, and then they forget about it. So I wish, that I wish they would do the whole song, okay? So if you're going to do something with classical music, do the whole song. Don't forget it out because you're going to get, you know, <laughs> uh, someone that will think that the, it's like their favorite part of the song and then, uh, they'll, you know, they, they won't like it. So great idea, fantastic execution, except you forgot the best part of the song. All right, so that pretty much wraps it up. So I'll give you the tip of the day. Now, we talked a lot a bit about HTML5, and we talked a bit about scalable vector graphics. You can actually export uh, these SVG graphics from Illustrator and use them in your websites. So why is that important? Well, again, when you the purpose of HTML5 is, is to have a consistent web experience across platforms, meaning that if you view your website on a mobile device, you view your website on a tablet, on your computer, on a projector, wherever, it's going to be the, a very similar experience. And scalable vector graphics are a big portion of that because uh, in the computer, it just scales it down. So if you're not into making scalable vector graphics in Illustrator, I highly recommend starting to do that. All right, And you can just actually export it. You just go to File, Save As, and then you, you have SVG. And it just, it just uh, gives you that SVG format. That's actually quite cool. And then you can play around with that in the code. So I highly recommend uh, starting to use that, okay? So this wraps up the podcast. I'll see you guys in the next podcast.